Hi, this is Ginger with The Overdrive Show. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I got you up early today, didn't I? <laughs> oh, no, it's 9.30. It's okay. <laughs> That's not too bad. I'm a very early riser. Oh, well, it's it's not, not my thing. I'm glad it's later here for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, anyway, so I, I was able to watch Waiting for the Miracle to Come. Um, and I, I have my own ideas of how to explain it, but I, I kind of really want to hear you explain it because I, I think it took me on a journey and it might take other people on different journeys, but I'd like to know like, um, how this film came about. Well, the film first came about because I wanted to write a film for Willie Nelson and, uh, Willie Nelson is an incredibly sort of different human being. He's not like any other people. He's a very progressive thinker. He, he He's just on another level. And so I knew the film had to have a sort of um, uh, esoteric, metaphysical value to it. And um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think that it's a good thing that the film takes people on different journeys. And it's not a film for everybody. It really isn't because I think if you, if you don't tap into – that sort of unseen world of the journey, I don't think the film will resonate. But I think that for people who um, relate to sort of those sort of relationships and, and family situations, uh, I think will resonate. And, and the film is set in a very timeless place so that these sorts of situations happen everywhere. So I didn't want it to be sort of um, representative of a particular period, um, you know, <clears throat> saying that people dealt with this this way then, they deal with it this way now. I wanted to create um, a, a sort of timeless environment and almost make it a fairy tale so that these sort of serious ideas could be explored in this sort of fairy tale world, almost like in a, in a snow globe, you know, that uh, got shook up and... Um, and, you know, I like slow-paced films. I think our attention span these days is so taken up with, you know. Technology. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just, it's just, uh, it's just really difficult to keep people's attention because our brains are trained by these devices to just keep clicking over. Um, so, you know, that's why, um, that, that's sort of my experience and, and sort of, how I see the film, but I'm so interested to hear yours. Well, for me, the the first thought that came to me was the Robin Williams movie, What Dreams May Come. Oh, yes. It reminded me of that because it, it I like the movie because like you're saying, like it, I could tell at some points it felt like she was in an older fashion world, but then there are other elements that made it seem like she was in a time that's closer to us and, and it was, yeah. it, it was, it was hard to pin down like that kind of thing. I like to get lost in a movie. So for me, this, this is a good movie for me because I do like to, um, you know, have that kind of dream sequence, but then it, it's almost like suspending, you know, disbelief just for a while, just to um, explore different topics and, you know, family family issues and, and loss um, and the things that we deal with, but then you put it in a, a magical environment that um, makes it not so heavy, but you still feel the yeah. emotional part of it. And so this yeah. was, and this was yeah, all I, on Willie Nelson's farm, correct? It was shot on his ranch. Yeah. He built this um, set for the film, The Redheaded Stranger. And after he filmed it, after the film was finished, he left the set there, and I had shot a documentary with him back in the mid-90s, and I shot a lot of it there. And I really wanted to go back there to shoot this film there uh, because it's just a magical place. I mean, it just – I mean, it just is Willie Nelson. Um, it, it's an incredible, an incredible place. And so I really wanted to go there. So, um, you know, we used that town as the sort of the town that she arrives in. Um, and so, yeah, and I think, you know, back to the timeless stuff, I think, you know, I think that, you know, in, in older times, you know, we used to be very used, we used to 
go, like people used to go to church and they would stop their lives and they would go into a different environment for that amount of time and try to focus their attention right. that way. And, you know, I, I attend a, a, a Latin mass. And so when I go to that Latin mass, I shut out the, the world and I go into this space where I just lose all of that modern sort of stuff and, and, and you have this hour or so with, in this other environment. And that was sort of behind my idea of the film as well. That, and, that, and that's a very difficult sort of idea to push because most people don't, don't, um, don't seek that. You know, these days so much. Um, oh yeah. Um, so yeah. It, I thought it was uh, unique that you put Bono together because he's kind of got a same Willie Nelson vibe as far as like he's very you know almost meditative a lot. I mean, yeah. he's very a, a deep thinker. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, so how did Bono get involved? Well, you know, it's sort of a long story, but I'll try to make it short. Um, many years ago, it must have been 1988, um, he played me a song on the piano. Uh, and so I, I said to him, you know, that's that's a really great song. And he said, I wrote it for Willie Nelson. We were huge Willie Nelson fans, both of us. I ended up in the mid-90s when I made the documentary, taking Willie Nelson to Ireland to record that song with YouTube. And I said to Bonner back then when I was making the documentary, I really need to make um, a film, like write a feature for him, for Willie Nelson, because he, you know, all you need to do is look at his face and he carries this sort of, I think, the emotions of every person. And I think that's why people are so drawn to him, because not only is he a great connector to people, but he, they see something in him that has affected them, you know, and he has this extraordinary ability in that way. And so I really wrote this film for him, you know, because I believe that he was, um, you know, he, he hadn't been used in that way before, and I think he needed to be, you know. And, then, and so Bono, Bono mm -hmm. helped me. I mean, Bono helped me get financing. He, he introduced me to a man who pulled the financing together for me, and then, you know, he told me he would write another song for Willie, uh, which he did. And uh, for the end of the film, which he also sings on, he sings the chorus. So it's a long history we've had with Willie Nelson <laughs> because we love him so much. And I mean, it's so incredible how you were involved with these legends. And then to me, uh, another huge legend is um, Charlotte. I mean, oh, Charlotte, Charlotte Rampling. I. I could watch her act in anything. I think she could just sit and read the dictionary and I would be okay with that. <laughs> Me too. She's very I mean, powerful. She, I, I've been a fan of hers since I was a teeny girl and I saw Georgie Girl. And um, I've just always loved her so much. She's, and, you know, the thing I love about Charlotte is that she is not, she has no fear. She has always chosen parts that she's interested in, not to further her career. She has aged beautifully. She has been this beautiful woman, you know, most photographed woman, I think, <laughs> in that period of time ever. And she has allowed herself to age in the most beautifully dignified way, which I think is a very strong message for women because women are being forced to sort of, you know, make themselves look younger and younger, which is just horrifying. So Charlotte was really important for me because – you know, Charlotte, and she had, like I said, when she's fearless, she would take on something like this and give it her all, you know. And I was so honored to have her. And, and she really was, wanted to work with Willie Nelson as well. You know, she wanted to, she came towards it for Willie. And the interesting thing was when they met, you felt like they had been together forever. Uh -huh. and they instantly had this sort of chemistry. Um, and because Charlotte, She's just an extraordinary woman. I mean, I just can't say that enough. I mean, I, I, she's, she's just someone to, for women to aspire to who are aging or, you know, young actors that look at her career and just try to be as brave as she was and in all of her choices because it was a journey for her. And so she did the 
films that she wanted to make, and some of them were like completely out there, and people were like, "Why is Charlotte Rampley making this film?" And then she'd go and do something like The Verdict with Paul Newman. But she did these films because she wanted to do them, not because oh, this will put me on this ladder for Hollywood or this ladder, you know. Yeah. And I think that's terribly inspiring. And she can come across. Uh, she can play a part where she's this beautiful, dignified lady, and then she can play a part where she's really the evil person behind, oh, yes. you know, and you, yes. you believe her either way. It doesn't, whatever she's doing, you just believe her. You believe what she's, what she's selling, however she's acting. Um, and I think the interesting thing about Charlotte was that, you know, she is a woman of the world. She's great at those characters, but she really fell in love with the story. You know, she loved the sweetness and beauty of the story and the innocence of the story. I mean, she was very drawn to that. Um, and she sort of said, she did it, said in, in an interview, you know, you don't get these sorts of films every day that tell a beautifully sweet story. And it's not sort of, you know, it's very hard to make those films without it being sort of, you know, cringy or something. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's very difficult um, to, and I'm very interested in metaphysical religious work and, 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 and being able to bring big stars towards that sort of material. Uh, so that we change the sort of, uh, I don't know, the lot that it's been in. You know, I mean, I know that Sandra Bullock and Blindside and all those films have done really well. Um, and so, you know, bringing in sort of different ideas and big stars, I think it's really important to, to make those sorts of films. And how and did... Charlotte, oh, sorry, ahead. sorry, go on. I was just going to say, how did um, you come across Sophie Lowe? Well, Sophie Lowe, I had seen her in a film with my friend Ben Mendelssohn. He was an, he's an Australian actor, and uh, he did a film with with Sophie called Beautiful Kate some years ago back in Australia, uh, directed by a woman called Rachel Ward, who used to be an actress. Amazing film. And I'd always remembered her. And, you know, I was Googling actresses one day that had done trapeze, you know, uh -huh. And because I really wanted somebody who knew how to. And, and, and Sophie Lowe's name came up. And I thought, wow. So I, Ben actually was living in my guest house at the time. So I ran over to Ben and I said, Sophie. And he said, yes. And so he called her and then we FaceTimed and that was it. You know, I, she's just the most incredible actress because she's able to portray this sort of open innocence and it's very hard to find actors like that that don't have a jaded sort of or calculated reaction to what someone's saying, you know. they It's hard for them not to bring their own ideas to it, whereas Sophie is this beautiful, open sort of energy that, that, that just takes things in. And we needed that innocence to sort of take us through the story. And I think, you know, she, I think she's in nearly every shot. I think it would be very difficult if she wasn't that sort of open, beautiful uh, spirit that she is to, to you know, look at her in every shot. And she's really asking the audience to go along with her. And uh, she's just such a talent. She re and she's a very, very beautiful person. She's She has something about her. I think what you said a while ago about the movie um, it, it being sweet or having sweetness. That was my, that was my thought when I got through with the movie is I thought it was, it was sweet. It does take on some hard subjects, but in a way that was, you know, it was very sweet. Uh, um, the people were sweet in it. Like she had this, um, I thought Sophie had a great, um, yeah, it's hard to have someone just like, you know, have a shot where the camera is like on their face for an extended period of time and just watching their face, you know, and yeah. she just could hold like main several meanings sometimes in a, in a look or the way she held herself. She just, um, I think you're right. I mean, it was important that you had someone that could pull that off and be believable. And she was definitely believable in somebody that just by looking at her, you wanted to know what she, what is she thinking? Where, where is she going? You know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm, I've always been influenced by the um, film, the Bluebird, which is a Shirley Temple film, uh, which is a fantasy film that deals with sort of real issues. And I've always been influenced by that film. Um, it's just uh, 
an extraordinary movie. And so, you know, it's sort of, they take these innocent children and go through these sort of, these sort of worlds. And I, I've always remembered that film and finding an actor, an actor that could portray that was, is very hard because even if you use a big named actor, you know, they come with so much already people have a feeling about them, you know, they, right. they have a sense of who they are and, and Sophie's done quite a bit of work, but you still don't have a sense of who she is because she's just completely um, mysterious and open in that way. Um, and I think she she always will be. She's just an extraordinary spirit, you know. I think she will always be like that. And she's, she's an incredible talent, and she really sort of, you know, I mean, the material is sort of, you know, she, I'm asking her to step into this sort of fantasy world, and I think she really did um, did a great job. I'm glad you saw that in her as well. I want to know if you're uh, if you're already looking into doing other projects. Yes, I am. I'm, I am writing I'm glad. a script right now. <laughs> well, I wanted this because I want to know if you were going to, you know, either take you know a, a similar way or or to just take the way you kind of attack the script, you know, and how you transform that on the screen. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next project and see where you take the next one. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, good. Now, my next one will be quite different, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, I'm very interested in the unseen nature of art, you know, and I think that's really important because not everyone will like it, but with the people that do pick up on that, those feelings that you sort of create, you know, even if that, that changes one person or helps one person, it's, it's worthy. So I'm really interested in that. So not everyone's going to like my work, but, you know, a lot of people that – can feel what, what the movie is trying to say will. And so, you know, my next film will be quite different, but it will still have that element, I think. That sounds, well, it sounds like kind of a, a genre or a style that that seems to be what you gravitate towards. And yeah, I think so. So now Waiting for the Miracle to Come, that is out on DVD now and video on demand. Um, yes. So, and they can go to waitingforthemiracletocome.com for more information about the movie. And um, you can also purchase it, obviously, uh, wherever you find DVDs. But you can go through through their website and find out more information. It, it really is a, it's a beautiful film. It's um, just, if you need to, like, kind of reside yourself, I think, in the very beginning to just say, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, leave my home, my work or whatever. And I'm just going to go on this journey. And when I come back, you know, see what, how I feel, you know, but just yeah, exactly. allow yourself to just, you know, just get on the ride and ride it till the end. And, and it, it's a beautiful movie. And, um, I, I like that you took, um, some hard subjects and took it to a magical place where it could be dealt with in a, a different way. And, I think it was very unique, and I, I am a Willie Nelson fan. I'm from, from Texas originally, so, oh, okay. uh, but I'm I'm a huge Charlotte Rampling fan, huge Bono fan. I'm now a, I'm now a huge Sophie Lowe fan. I did not oh, know good. her. I'm, I did not know her work before, but now that I now that I've seen this, I, I'm a big fan of hers as well, and a big oh. fan of you. I think this is incredible. Um, it's a really beautiful film, and it's very sweet. And I I hope that people check it out and. Uh, I'm thankful so much to you to spend time with us, you know, letting us know more about the film. No, I'm very happy to do that. And, you know, when people go to Amazon, the film can be streamed on Amazon and uh, uh, iTunes. But I think when you go to the front page of our website, I think you just click on those and it'll take you straight to those, those uh, places. So I do hope people watch it because, you know, mainly for, Willie Nelson, um, but also for Charlotte and Sophie, because I think that um, people, I think that come to watch Willie Nelson will be surprised because a lot of them won't, don't really know of Charlotte, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and it's interesting, I'm so glad that you asked me about her because a lot of the other interviews, they don't mention Charlotte. And I have to say, 
She's it's legendary, though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she really is. She's in she's in a lot of movies. You don't necessarily see her always like a main character, but whenever she, wherever she's at, she commands everybody. Like you know, her her acting just stops you wherever she, whatever she's playing. You know, and she she does exactly. it so well, and she's she's just bigger than life. As soon as her part comes on, whether it's a minor role, I think she was in one of the Mission Impossible movies with Tom Cruise, and she's, like, in the back seat. She's playing, like, this evil spy person, but she's doing it in a way that you, you, you're, you like, scared of her, but you still like her. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean it's, yeah. uh, she just has a, a, a very quiet power about her that is very undeniable, and I, I've always loved her work. And oh, um, I'm, I'm a really big fan of, uh, Willie Nelson, and um, I, I thought this was very unique, and I'm glad it was on his rants that made it uh, even a more unique experience, knowing that's where it was when you filmed it. Good. <laughs> well, it's such an honor talking to you, and uh, I, I hope to talk to you for your next film when that's out. <laughs> Me too. I would love to. Um, I'm just busy writing it, so hopefully won't take me as long as it took me to make the last one <laughs> make waiting for the miracle i hope this one's quicker <laughs> well you, yeah you know you'll 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 start you'll stay inspired i think um so. <laughs> i'm i'm ex, i'm excited for for what comes next with you and thank you so much again guys you can go to waiting for the miracle to come dot com or download it um you know on any digital platforms or uh, by the DVD, but like she said, you can just go to the website and it'll take you right there and that'll make sure you go into the right place for the right movie. And thank you again. It's Liam. Am I, Liam, I'm not saying that wrong, am I? It's Leanne, actually. Leanne. But it's, you know, it's spelled like L Liam. It's like I Liam Neeson, but Ian, yeah. Put an L in front of it. So but it's, yeah, it's, but it's not Leanne, it's Leanne, correct? Well, it's sort of, it's in between. Okay. It's Leanne. Yeah, it's in between. Some people call me Leanne. Some people, people call me Leanne. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. It's all the same. Well, I, do, um, I don't like to get anybody's name wrong, when, especially okay. during an interview. Um, well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I love your accent. Um, I, could, <laughs> I could talk to you forever based on your accent alone, but it was a pleasure talking to you. And um, thank, thank you for you. making this beautiful film. Thank you so much, and thank you for, for talking to me and having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we will um, we'll, uh, publish the interview online, and we'll um, tag the social media for the movie, so in case anybody wants to um, hear more about you and behind the, the movie itself and a little bit more about the movie from the writer and director. Thank you. Thank you. You have a very okay. blessed day. And you as well.